Hello, Star Wars fans. Today is my breakdown and reaction to Bad Batch, Season 3, Episodes 6 through 7, which I am summarizing as a tense reunion because that reunion at the end of Episode 7 was about a long time coming and maybe didn't go as well as everyone expected, but could have been a lot worse. Uh, as, as usual, I try to give a slightly different take on the episodes than a lot of the Easter egg type breakdowns. Those are great, uh, but you know I like to put in a unique spin on things, so hopefully you'll enjoy this. There will be spoilers, but as long as you're okay with that, then let's dive right in and see what we can find out. Don't forget we have the March contest running all month long. Be a subscriber, leave a comment, you might win a book or a steel book with of course some brand new options there, Andor and Obi-Wan, very cool. So best of luck. And we have the membership option in case you're interested in some of the cool behind the scenes videos and other perks that you can get for being a member. All right, so as we jump into this breakdown, I have to start with a huge, huge standing O for D. Bradley Baker. Look at this. Look at all these characters he's played. Obviously the Bad Batch, every member of the Bad Batch, but also Batcher, hello, who knew that he was Batcher, right? Captain Rex, Clone Troopers, Clone X Troopers, Commander Scorch, Commander Wolf, Fireball, Greer, Hauser, Lieutenant Hilo, and Samson. And granted, some of the characters aren't, you know, super unique, but there are multiple, multiple different characteristics he puts into each of these characters. D. Bradley Baker is the man. Wow, incredible. All right, so I love in this episode that we see this meeting between Senator Chucci, uh, who used to be a member of the Imperial Senate, um, and of course we saw her uh, earlier uh, uh, last season uh, very much defending the clones and clone rights, which was very cool, and she's addressing Senator Singh and saying, thank you for meeting with me, and we see Senator Singh again <laughs> with his a unique hat. Uh, he, he wears the hat well, but I, I would not get away with wearing that hat. <laughs> but anyway, he is a former member of the Separatists. So it's really cool to see that opposite sides of the Clone Wars, you know, basically the Republic and the Separatists, are now seeing uh, some, some commonalities between the issues they're having with the Empire. Uh, so yeah, he says that even though we are on opposite sides during the Clone War, it's great to see that we're chatting together. Uh, and of course, we remember him, right? He was in previous seasons where his um, planet was taken over by the Empire, and he wasn't real happy about that, and he basically kicked off the planet. So yeah, very, very cool to see this all coming together. And I love that she says the Emperor is concerned that planets and systems may unite to oppose him. Of course, they don't even realize that he's actually you know, a Sith Lord. <laughs> they just think he's a, a bad Emperor. But yeah, we're seeing the seeds of a rebellion here, right? Uh, and I love how he leans in, what are you suggesting? So well, tell me your thoughts. Do you think we're going to see either of these two showing up maybe in live action in Andor? Because keep in mind, Andor is, what, just uh, you know, 10, 12 years later from, from the Bad Batch series? So yeah, these, these two may be key parts of the upcoming rebellion. And what I really love about this season is they're tying back to the earlier seasons. And some of these episodes, I'll admit, I thought they were kind of throwaway episodes. I mean, back in the days when they just went on different missions and it looked like it was mission of the week and it didn't matter, everything matters, right? Everything is coming back in this final season. Such good writing, such a good job tying it all together. All right, so then... We see multiple clone assassins, and I'm going to call them Clone X Troopers because that's what they called them in the credits, and I kind of like Clone X. Reminds me of Weapon X from, uh, from Marvel. And these, these guys are, are, are tough, man. They are tough. Uh, so we actually saw him earlier in this season uh, standing guard, and there's been some theories. Maybe this was tech. I, I don't know that I totally understand those theories because, I, I, I mean, yeah, it'd be wild if tech was captured and brainwashed, and it's certainly a twist, but it, it just doesn't seem to make sense to me personally. But let me know your thoughts. Do you, is this potentially tech? But I, I don't think so. Um, but what I do love is all the things we're learning about these uh, Clone X troopers. So their identities are erased, brainwashed, if you will. They undergo conditioning. Interesting. Also, they are activated when needed. I thought that was interesting. He asked, why have I been activated? So I'm telling you, you combine this with some of the music they play uh, when the when the Clone X troopers are running around, I get major Winter Soldier vibes, and I am totally down with that. That is one of my favorite movies in in the MCU, and I really think these characters, the Clone X, remind me of that. You know, activated, brainwashed, coded, programmed, very very cool. Uh, also, uh, we learn that they're top secret. You know, even uh, some of the clones who are working for the Empire ask, "What squadron are you with?" Well, that's classified. Really? Wow. So it's like a, a subdivision hidden off uh, that, that the other clones are not aware of. That, that's got to make them suspicious, right? And then they carry around these data pucks 
that are highly encrypted and, and, and list off who the people, their targets are. Once again, that reminds me of Winter Soldier, right? Because that was the first thing he would ask. Who's my target? Who's my target? Uh, then they talk about having Fireball uh, find out what's on the puck when they get back to base camp. And just a small thing, but I really love the fact that the pucks were also seen in Mandalorian. Because remember, this is Mandalorian's puck there on the table showing him you know, who he's going after and showing the guy, hey, you're my guy. Yeah, you're the one I'm coming after. So very cool how they just tie these little details in across uh, all the different series uh, in Star Wars. All right, so it's great to see Hauser return uh, you know, during this first uh, mission. Uh, first scene, uh, we have Rex there saying, Hauser, I'm approaching the senator. What's your status? Of course, Hauser says, all clear up top. And I'm sure you remember Hauser. Hauser has very good reason to not trust um, Crosshair because Crosshair totally betrayed him, got many of his troops killed. So yeah, the, the, the reunion between uh, Crosshair and Hauser went as uncomfortably as one might expect. And man, Crosshair's got to be feeling it, man. He betrayed everybody, everybody, wild. Uh, but anyway, the new guys, the new guys do not last too long. So we get a couple brand new clones, Greer. At least to my knowledge, Greer has never appeared before this episode. They ask him, uh, is the interior secure? And also Samson. Samson is asked uh, for status and he says it's cold but quiet. And let me tell you, if you're a new guy, if this is the first time you've appeared, you're kind of like a red shirt <laughs> from, from uh, my other uh, favorite uh, medium, uh, Star Trek. Yeah, remember the other guys that when they go down on the mission and you don't know who they are, yeah, they're dead. <laughs> they're not making it. Um, so yeah, pretty much Samson and Greer, as soon as their names are mentioned, you're like, oh, they're going to die. And they die pretty, pretty bad deaths. One strangled to death and the other one shot. Craziness. But, but there's also some other members of the supporting cast who have been named in previous episodes. They get killed too. I mean, that's, it's a high body count. So Nemec, I actually thought Nemec was going to die here. Uh, they say you need to get the comms online. He runs over, starts to get him programmed and turned on, and then uh, Clone X shoots the comm device and blows him across the room. I thought he was dead here. Nope, nope. He actually shows up in the second of two episodes. That's him on the right, and then he gets shot <laughs> and falls down and is dead. As, the, as Rex shouts out Nemec. So yeah, Nemec bl uh, bites it. And then Fireball, poor Fireball, man. He's got his flamethrower. I thought that was a really cool scene. He gets shot in the shoulder, if you remember. And then his uh, flamethrower sets off one of the bombs and kills him. So yeah, that's four named clones. I mean, who knows how many unnamed clones died? Probably a ton. That's four named clones that died. This is, this is gonna turn out to have a high body bag season for sure. But... Maybe on a happier note, I love uh, the Crosshair and Omega relationship. Uh, it's just so cute. You know, here he is uh, chewing on his toothpick again, uh, something he started doing last episode, and then we see Omega doing the same thing, looking over at him. That's so sweet. I, I don't know that he's necessarily the hero you should be looking up to, <laughs> Omega, but nonetheless, uh, uh, the, she, the fact that with the childlike uh, innocence, she's like, hey, you come back, you're part of the team again, and I accept you. I love it. I love it. And we'll see more of that in a moment. But also she gets her new weapon, um, an energy crossbow. Can't wait to see her using that. Uh, she asks, where did Echo get it? And Echo says, I've made a few interesting contacts across the galaxy. I think that is a little plot point that will be returning. Who are these interesting contacts and what exactly do you owe them? So we'll have to see where that goes. Uh, but there she is using or testing her crossbow out. And, uh, very, very cool. Love to see her uh, in combat with that. All right, so Tantus is definitely shaping up to be the final battle. I had suggested in a previous episode that the fact that they lost the coordinates uh, to Tantus, that maybe that means it would remain a secret in an operation after the Bad Batch series has ended. I'm not convinced on that anymore because here's Rex, uh, or, or sorry, Hunter saying to Rex, uh, your numbers are growing. Of course, he lost some this episode, these episodes, but uh, he says, once we find the coordinates to the Tantus base, Rex says, we have to hit it hard if we're going to pull our brothers out of there. So, yeah, I'm now convinced Tantus is going to be the scene for the final battle, and it's going to make the, the four that died in these two episodes, the four clones, look like nothing. It is going to be ugly. Gosh, I mentally, we got to mentally prepare ourselves for a very, very sad episode, or set of episodes even. Uh, and then is this a tease for a big-time cameo? So um, they start talking about the M count, and you know, uh, Omega's saying, hey, they were looking for, for, for this mysterious M count, but she didn't know what it was. Rex says, well, I've heard it mentioned before, but I can't say for sure. And at the end of the second episode, he says, I think Omega is vital to whatever they're doing on Tantus. And if you want to keep her safe, you need to find out why she is so important to them. So everybody is now interested in what is this M count and why is it important? Well, who does Rex know that has an M count? 
Wouldn't it be cool if we got an Ahsoka cameo? Now, based on the Tales of the Jedi episode, it seems like Ahsoka is still off on this farm. I'll be honest, that episode had a very confusing timeline, and if she does make a cameo, I'll, I'll talk more about it. I do have a previous video where I throw out my thoughts on it. Um, but I don't know, I kind of think she won't appear, even though it'd be way cool if she did. But I kind of think that won't happen. Uh, instead, you have to wonder how about the other rumored cameo. In fact, it's not really rumored. They pretty much showed us this is going to happen, and that would be Asajj Ventress. D does she somehow explain to them M count? I kind of don't think she's going to want to sit down and talk about it, <laughs> but they got to find somebody who knows what an M count is. So very interesting. Who do you think is going to help them learn what this uh, M count is. Of course, we know what it is, but I mean, help them learn what it is. All right, so I thought this was kind of fun. Poor Crosshair. He's having so much trouble with his aim. He shoots twice, cannot hit the Clone X trooper, so he uses the cheat code and puts on this cool um, bomb on the end of his gun. I love that idea. Shoots the bomb over to the wall, and it blows up and knocks the, the Clone X trooper down the, uh, the elevator shaft. Very, very cool. And then he just barely, man, this dude, you cannot kill this guy. I mean, yes, the first one died. The first one that went after him died in the first episode because he killed himself. No, no, sorry, sorry. This guy killed him, shot him. But this guy, this one, man, they cannot kill this dude. And is, is it just me or seeing him fall down an elevator shaft and grab on at the last minute? Did it remind you of Die Hard when, when McLean fell down the shaft and just barely at the last second grabbed with his hands? I mean, I don't know if this is an homage to that scene or not, but it sure made me think of it. And I love Die Hard, so very cool. T tell me what you think about that. But yeah, this dude is very, very hard to kill. And isn't it interesting how he has some very good aim? Notice he aims at the engine, uh, pulls the trigger, and boom, disables the ship in mid-flight. That was impressive. We'll talk a little bit more that, about that in just a second. Um, then... Another cool couple scenes here between Omega and Crosshair. I mean, th this is Crosshair's season, without a doubt, and Omega's. These two are, are going to be the main stars. It's kind of a bummer because the other clones aren't getting as much attention, but they've gotten attention in earlier seasons. Th this is uh, Crosshair and Omega's, but I love this. He says, stay close. It's easy to get lost in this terrain, and she's like, you're as bad as Hunter. And he's like, oh, I'm much worse. Love that, love that. And then later, he says, I'll draw their fire, get to the rendezvous. Omega's like, I don't like that idea. And he's like, too bad, <laughs> too bad. Very fun. I, I can't wait to continue to see their, their uh, uh, back and forth relationship uh, going on and on. That's though, if assuming Crosshair makes it <laughs> through the season, my goodness. So notice the clone X seems to have a beef with Crosshair instead of going after Omega. And Omega is the most important asset for the Empire right now, right? That's what Palpatine said. Yet the dude goes after Crosshair knocks him off the, the cliff. They land in the water. That was really cool. Uh, they end up going over a waterfall. Well, the first of two. So this one's not too bad. Um, and then I love this fight with the um, energy blade. That's really cool. But notice how Clone X is like, hey, you had your chance to be one of us. You chose the wrong side. He really, really seems to hate Crosshair. You throw in the fact that he's very good uh, with his aim, like a sniper. I can't help but wonder if he doesn't have, if he's not maybe like a clone of a clone, in this case, a clone of Crosshair. Did they steal some of Crosshair's blood and make a clone out of Crosshair? I mean, the dude has the same skill set as Crosshair. They fight the same, and he really, really hates Crosshair. I mean, dumps him under the water to watch him drown. Oh, man, this was a scary scene. I was like, oh, my gosh, is he really going to kill him this way? So let me know your thoughts. Is there some tie between these two? If if the clone isn't a clone X is not a clone of Crosshair, did he, I don't know, study his moves? Something. Why does he hate him so much? But, hey, I did not feel bad at all when he finally got, boom, stunned. I love that. That, that was really it looks painful. Normally we see just the blue circle shooting across the room, but to see what it, what it does to them, yeah. So he gets stunned and falls off a really, really big waterfall. And yeah, you can see him right there, right there, He's little, little bitty. So the first waterfall was nothing. <laughs> this, this is like the waterfall in uh, The Fugitive, Harrison Ford falling off the waterfall. But of course, he manages to get out again at the end. This dude, man, this dude, you cannot kill him. 
All right, so then the reunion that I've kind of named these two episodes after, this was a long time coming. So Rex realizes Wolf, and Wolf realizes Rex. Yeah, these two have not seen each other for a long time because uh, Wolf says, I, I, I thought you were dead. Uh, the report said you were killed in action, that you went down aboard an attack cruiser. And of course, what he's referring to is the end of the Clone Wars, the final season, the final uh, fight where Rex and Ahsoka are on that cruiser. So yeah, that means Wolf and Rex have not seen each other for several years. So yeah, this, this definitely was a reunion uh, that we've been waiting for. So then the question is, where does Wolf's loyalties fall? Where do they fall? Because um, Rex says, as your brother, I'm asking you to do the right thing. And sure enough, Wolf does. He says, stand down, ultimately, stand down. So he is letting Omega go. This is not going to sit well if anybody finds out, and I'm sure they will, uh, that, that, that Wolf made this decision. So I think he's going to see how uh, the Empire really doesn't care about him because he, he's going to be in trouble. Um, and then uh, Gregor makes three because uh, on the right, that's Gregor. And we know it's Gregor because in the first of the two episodes, uh, Echo, or, uh, Hunter says, I thought your rendezvous with Gregor was a top priority. And Echo says, yeah, yeah, I'll pick him up after dropping you off. So that's definitely Gregor on the ship, which means we now actually have a very interesting reunion. Rex, Gregor, and Wolf. And where do we next see them? Or, or down the line do we see them? In Rebels. So, boy, here's the thing. That means we know these three are going to live, for sure. They have to, because they're, they're here. <laughs> so we know they're going to live. I'm betting that may be about it, because wouldn't the other clones be hanging with them here? Man, we are going to have a massive, massive body count. Oh, gosh. All right, there you go. That is my breakdown of those two episodes and my thoughts on them. Again, let me know your thoughts on Clone X and Crosshair, where they're going to find out about the M count, and are these the only three that are going to make it? So again, here is our uh, episode list. Next week is Bad Territory. Uh, in two weeks, we'll get two episodes, and then on May 1st, May 1st, we will get the final uh, episode. And man, that better be a long one. <laughs> that better not only be 30 minutes. Give us, give, us, give us everything you got for that final episode. And of course, here's the timeline. It'll be interesting to see, do we actually get into 17 BBY or not? Uh, and then as I've mentioned, we got the March contest. Be a subscriber, leave a comment, win a book or a steel book. And of course, we have the membership option. And then we do have the Discord and we talk about Star Wars here all the time. In fact, I love a silver saying, oh my gosh, I forgot it's Bad Bass Wednesday. You know, now that go see them, right? Go watch the episodes. Um, so yeah, very cool. We talk about Star Wars. We talk about DC. We talk about Marvel. We also have rewatches of Everything Under the Sun. We have a comic club. We have MMRPG. We have DC retrospectives getting ready for the new DCU. Hey, you can get a Madam Web role if you saw the movie and you want to admit it. <laughs> I did. I got a Madam Web role, so you can have one too. Uh, in addition to Star Wars, DC, and uh, Marvel, we also have a other media forum, and you can talk about anything you want in there. And lastly, we do have a contest going for anybody who wants to make a thumbnail for my upcoming video on the second half of Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. We all know my thumbnails are not that great, <laughs> so I'm sure yours will be better than mine. Whoever wins the contest, I will use it in the video and, and call you out and give you credit for your awesome artwork. So I will leave a pinned comment in case you want to join the Discord server. We'd love to have you. Almost 1,300 members across the globe. Conversations going on 24-7. Also, if you don't mind, like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. You can check out more content, and we will all eagerly await the next episode of The Bad Batch.